Well, you already saw part one, hopefully, the wrestling-related questions for this week's OTR Essential Q&A. <sighs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But now we get to the more interesting stuff, let's be honest. The non-wrestling-related questions. I split it up into its own video, so if you chose to click on this and then you complain that I'm answering non-wrestling-related questions, when I told you these would be non-wrestling-related questions, then you're an idiot. Just accept that, okay? All right, so let's get started. Jeff's ego. Again, my ego's so big, it's got its own Twitter handle. Thoughts on the planned merger between Disney and Fox? It needs to be stopped, blocked, and immediately. Fuck that shit. I'm tired of this corporate consolidation. That means these big companies are getting even bigger, meaning they have increasing control over the marketplace. It is anti-competitive, it is monopolistic, and it is something that needs to be stopped. And personally, if somebody like Donald Trump does come out and says no to Disney and Fox and this merger and fights against it, then I will support that. I'm not so ardently anti-Trump, as much of an idiot as he is and as bad as I think he is for this country, that I'm not going to support him or defend him when he makes a good decision. Trying to block a merger between Disney and Fox is good. And before you sit there and say, well, that's allowing the market conditions to no. At some point in time, the market conditions need to change. At some point in time, we have to adhere to the thought of open and fair competition. And this type of shit, this monopolistic type of behavior must be stopped. Uh, D. Supreme Dookie. Thick, what would you rather have? A thick woman with a flat ass and no tits or a slim woman with a big real ass and real big tits? Is this? Let me ask you this first. Is a woman really thick? if they have no ass and no tits. That just sounds like a fat girl with no shape. I mean, that's what it is. It's a fat girl with no shape. Yeah, give me the slim woman with the big tits and the big ass any day of the week. I, I don't even know how that's a question. Now, if you sat there and said, you want a thick woman, thick woman with tiny tits but a big ass, you know, then that, it could be a different conversation or big tits but a tiny ass then at least they got one of the two but they're not thick if they have no ass and no tits they aren't that's not bbw that's not thick that's fat nodly shaped apayo your perfect weekend what would be my perfect weekend uh two chicks at the same time repeatedly over and over and when i'm not doing that i'm on the golf course Sounds like a great weekend to me. Charles McCain, your thoughts on Laura Ingram's apology to David Hogg or Hogue or however the hell you say his name. Oh, God. This is one of these things where I really don't have a dog in the fight because I don't particularly like either one of them. Uh, being real. What, what was the whole controversy about? I gotta be honest with you. Over the past year plus, I have learned to just kind of unplug from a lot of this stuff and not pay that close attention to every single outrage or every single thing that sends people into a buzz and fury on social media because you go crazy doing that and it's a cycle of stupidity that I just choose not to participate in by and large and I feel better that I have stayed away from this stuff my understanding is is uh, psycho cunt made some disparaging remarks about the uh, this dude who was a Parkland shooting survivor um, because he was complaining about colleges not accepting him. I mean, now granted, this is the same uh, bitch that told LeBron James to shut up and dribble, which is kind of weird because she has all these opinions on politics, but last I checked, she wasn't a politician and hadn't been in politics herself as an elected representative, so you could use that same logic to her. I mean, it just it kind of speaks to... All right, let me let me... Make sure I measure this out how I say this. Uh, Laura Ingram is a dumb bitch. Laura Ingram is also a smart bitch in the sense of she understands that she can say these wild and crazy things and she can feed the craziness and psychoness of the right and make a lot of money off of it. It is the Fox News business model the past two plus decades. Similar to how certain individuals on an NBC like Rachel Maddow might do their own things to try and rally up the crazy left, but because the crazy left isn't is invested, doesn't care as much, um, they don't make as much money doing it. I mean, it's that simple. Um, yeah, 
I don't know why people watch a Laura Ingram. She is a dumb bitch. Um, I don't care. She's if you go to her and agree with a lot of her opinions, I might suggest reprioritizing your plot in life. Um, only reason she apologized was because sponsors were pulling out, and it's that simple. And my thought is, nah, you said it, bitch. Stand behind it. I hate when people sit there and say something that they truly meant and they truly believed and don't believe in the apology and they only are apologizing because of the backlash or the consequences. Nah, you said it. Stand behind it. And as far as the other dude, what, is it Hog or Hogue? Who gives a shit? Okay, he survived a school shooting. Yes. That is not carte blanche that every single thing he says is automatically right and can't be questioned. That's ridiculous. As far as him, if he's whining about a couple, like I said, I don't know all the background. So if I'm speaking a little bit out of turn, so be it. I own up to that. But if he's going on social media and complaining about schools rejecting him, boo freaking who, get over that. There's also that element to me that gets kind of bothered by him and who's the one bald chick, whatever her name is. Um, it feels like they're trying to take an event that happened and create a platform, not so much for the issue, but for themselves and trying to get themselves over. And that is maybe natural, a reaction to what they're doing. And that's going to happen as a byproduct. But there's something really fundamentally wrong to me with trying to make sure you're in front of every camera that you could possibly see. And all of a sudden these people are verified on Twitter and stuff because they happen to survive one school shooting. What, what about all these other people that survive school shootings that don't get that? What about the families of all these people that didn't survive school shootings or the people that survived police violence or didn't survive peace, police violence? It's just, it seems like they're trying to profit off of the blood of their classmates and that rubs me the wrong way. And while people can talk about these young kids are the future, the future being the key word, do you want a bunch of 17 and 18 year olds who can barely control their own damn hormones and emotions dictating policy for the rest of the country and the world? Just saying. Uh, Bo O'Neill, let's shift gears here significantly. Your favorite porn star all time, Jada Fire. Oh, big old tits, thick ass. Oh, yeah. And she loved the ladies. And when she got really excited, she let it all out. Oh, yeah. As far as currently, uh, Anna Fox, she likes the ladies and she likes them white boy cream pies. She does. So you know that works for my ass. And then there's Misty Stone. And it's just something about her when she's rubbing up and tripping on another girl. And she starts saying, oh my goodness. At that point in time, I'm saying, oh my goodness. And I'll be done watching very quickly. Um, so there you go. Uh, what do we got next? Uh, Brian Knight, thoughts on the Cambridge Analytica uh, Facebook scandal? Oh, you're saying that Facebook wasn't protecting your data. Oh, you're surprised Mark Zuckerberg, that piece of shit, did something scandalous and bad. We're surprised that these companies are protecting our data, even though they say they are. We're surprised that this type of crap is happening. We're surprised that Cambridge Analytica might have ties to Trump campaign. We're surprised. Why does any of this shit surprise you? And it's like when you hear people talk about, well, I'm not giving up my social security number. To, it doesn't fucking matter, you stupid idiots, because there, it's out there anyways. One way or another, between the Equifax data breach and so many other things that have happened, your information is out there, accept it, period. It does not matter. All these things, I'm going to get identity theft protection. Doesn't fucking matter if the credit bureau gets hacked now, does it? Yeah, Facebook's always been in the data mining and data business and selling people's information off. You cannot tell me that they make all of their money off of selling ad space. Give me a fucking break. They've got, what, one and a half, two billion people on Facebook? You know where the real money comes in. This comes from selling people's information. Always has, always will be. You trusted Zuckerberg. Didn't Zuckerberg steal this concept and idea from one of his college friends and take it and pretend like it was his own? You, know, you want to talk about Trump and his team and the Russians? How about Zuckerberg and the fucking Russians? Like anybody that was suggesting Zuckerberg as a presidential candidate a year or two ago should look at themselves in the mirror and slap themselves repeatedly until they bleed. 
because you were an idiot. I'm glad it happened. I'm glad Zuckerberg getting knocked off his perch a little bit because he fucking needed it. That arrogant prick. Moving on. Uh, v, your thoughts on Eminem? Fan. Like his work. One of the best rappers of my lifetime. Sorry if that bothers people, but he is. Ryan Steele, your thoughts on the Parkland shooting and renewed gun control and ban talk? Oh boy. Um, let's start off with this. What's so different about this particular school shooting compared to so many others that all of a sudden now we're supposed to really give a shit? Like all of a sudden now it's supposed to matter. Like I even go all the way back to Columbine. Those were teenagers. They got shot up and killed. You can see a whole bunch of social movements and stuff. But now we get to Parkland. And all of a sudden now, because these were teenagers and they can talk for themselves and they're old enough to get on camera, now I'm supposed to care more than, let's say, Newtown or any of these other school shootings. Like, all of a sudden now it's supposed to fucking matter. Give me a break. The whole discussion, the whole debate is truly about profit. For the media, it is about driving sensationalistic narratives, whether conservative, liberal, or so-called in-the-middle media. It is all about sensationalism and driving narratives and talking points in order to profit. And if you think it is about anything other than that, get over yourself and get a clue. Because that's what it's exactly about. The NRA has a dog in this fight because all the talk about gun control and gun bans means more NRA memberships and more gun sales, which is great for the gun industry, the gun lobby, so they win with this. They win either way. Either nothing happens, but the fear of it drives up business, or potentially something could happen, and it drives up business even more. So you have to sort through all the bullshit, because this country is bullshit. This world is bullshit. And it's high time people really realize that is what it is. As far as the gun control and ban talk, look you can compare us to other countries like australia and this country and that country that have significant gun control and massive gun control but you also have to look at the reality of who we are and the gun culture that we have and understand that that is not realistic and nor should it necessarily need to have to be realistic we also must understand if we love our guns that the second amendment protects your right to have some type of protection, but it is not carte blanche to have whatever the fuck you want. We don't walk around with goddamn machine guns, and we don't walk around with bazookas and rocket launchers for a reason. So sitting here getting mad, about oh, you can't take my AR-15. Yes, they fuck they can, and maybe the fuck they need to. But, backing up from that for a second, all this talk about banning weapons and such doesn't matter if you don't start with the fundamentals. You don't start at the very beginning. And until we get universal background checks, close the gun show loophole, ban any and all internet sales, and work hard to fight against them, nothing else matters. You go through, in some cases, depending on how you buy your gun, you go through more stringent background checks to get a job, to get a credit card, to get a mortgage loan, to get a car loan, to get a house or an apartment, than you do to fucking get a gun. That is retarded. This is absolutely idiotic. The whole notion of arming teachers is stupid. You're going to arm teachers? I remember my teachers. The vast majority of them, I would want nowhere near a firearm. This whole notion automatically that a good guy with a gun stops a bad guy with a gun is ridiculous as well because there were good people with guns at that school and it didn't stop shit. And honestly, who's to say the one good guy or two good guys with a gun don't get hit from behind by the bad guy with a gun? It's just dumb. Like, that is just ignorant thought process arming teachers if you say mandatory metal detectors in schools mandatory security presence at every school in the country different conversation worth having but before we start talking about banning weapons and doing all of this stuff 
let's do the basic most fundamental thing we must we must get those universal background checks something like a bump stock should be absolutely be illegal the fact that it's legal is ridiculous then you start worrying about other things you're never going to get to a place where you can take away everybody's guns and nor should we necessarily do so there are lots of different intricate things here but the whole notion that uh, you can't just take my gun because the Second Amendment protects it is bullshit. Even when making the Heller decision, the Supreme Court said otherwise. So you're wrong. Um, taking away all the guns, in theory, especially the legally owned guns, doesn't necessarily deal with the problem of all the illegal guns that are held in this country. Also, by focusing on school shootings, there are far more people that are killed in other ways. Should we allow the sensational, occasional thing to drive the greater overall thought process. And if we talk about it, to me, far more people are killed in the cities, in the suburbs, by guns than they are at schools. Shouldn't we focus on that more? Also, two thirds of gun related deaths are via suicide, not homicides. Shouldn't we be focused on that? The point I'm getting at here is, it says so often the case in this world, we try to make black, gray issues, very gray issues, black and white. And this is truly one of these issues that is not black and white. There is very little black and white about it. Very, very little black and white about it. And people need to stop speaking in absolutes and stop speaking in black and white type of terms because this is not one of those type of issues. Um, what else we got here? Um, Luis Sayala, who would win a battle royal of starting NFL quarterbacks? Uh, it would probably come down to Big Ben and Cam Newton because they're the big fat boys in the group. I would probably go with Big Ben because eventually Cam would realize Ben has that gleam in his eye and he doesn't know if Ben's going to try and rape him. So I will go Ben Roethlisberger. Rick Stiles, who will draft LeAngelo Ball and will he make an impact? I don't see where he's any damn good and I don't know why anybody would want to freaking draft him because of his damn dad. And you see what the Lakers have been putting up with in some respects with LeVar. Why would you want to bring that distraction onto yourself? Now, maybe the Lakers would bring him in as like an undrafted free agent, you know, but I think the single biggest reason LeBron James doesn't go to the Lakers is LeVar Ball because he's not going to want to deal with that bullshit. And frankly, if you're LeBron James, you're absolutely right. Who the fuck is LeVar Ball compared to you? Uh, so I don't know if he gets drafted at all, honestly. Horror Movie Review 73. How come some movies like Exorcist and The Godfather haven't gotten remakes? Um, Probably because it'd be really, really hard to remake those, maybe. Uh, probably because there'd be a thought of there'd be no way to be able to remake them and have it go over well. Let's not ask that question. Let's just be gra glad that there is something that hasn't been remade. Israel Carrillo. I remember a guy who appeared on the original OTRS. You beat him in basketball, whooped his ass, and at some point he stopped appearing. Whatever happened to him? That was B-Rad. What you're referencing is the man Tathlon, which was epic and awesome. Now, mind you, when we played one-on-one, -on -one, I gave him, I think, wasn't it eight points, guys? And I still came back and beat him because that's what I do. I beat his ass. Um, he stopped appearing because he moved to Florida. And we were all still in Iowa at the time. That's, it's that simple. He, he was married to Mr. Rout's sister, and they moved to Florida. That's what happened. Tear. Yes. Polly Paul, is Russell Westbrook the most overrated NBA player in recent memory? Yes, good God, thank you, somebody else sees it. And I know there has to be a segment of people, and maybe they sit under the radar a little bit because they're afraid of all the Russ heads coming at them and blasting them, but I'm sorry. You can get caught up in all the statistics and all the other bullshit, but his offensive efficiency is god-awful. It's quite easy to sit there and rebound when you're sagging off of your man because you're not guarding anybody. It's pretty easy to get the assist numbers you get when you literally dominate the ball all the goddamn time. It's pretty easy to score the number of points that he does when he takes so many god-awful, ill-advised shots. Eventually, a few of them are going to fucking go in and he'll get to the free throw line. Russell Westbrook is massively overrated. He is a stats guy and nothing more. He is not a guy you're going to win an NBA championship with. He is the reason that Kevin Durant left and who the hell could blame him. Like, how could you look at Russell Westbrook and think that he's an MVP candidate? How could you look at Russell Westbrook and think this guy is a true franchise player? He's a freaking egomaniac that doesn't make people around him better. And that's the way it is. I would much rather have James Harden over Russell Westbrook. Are you fucking kidding me? 
you got to be insane to think otherwise. To me, anyways. And I even got knocks on James Harden's game. Oh, let's talk about how he crossed somebody over and neglect the fact that he pushed him off by 10 fucking feet. Uh, the Rock says, favorite position to fuck a girl? Sitting down with them on top. Because let's face it, as guys, we're kind of lazy. That's what it is. Mason Clark, did you have any other pets before Precious, Smokey, and Feisty? Yeah, as a matter of fact, Smokey had a younger brother that passed away when he was about a year and a half. That was lucky. Um, before them, when I was younger, my dad and them had a dog named Snoopy. That was a great dog, too. She was a lab pointer mix. I missed that dog tremendously. We had some cats as I was growing up. Most notable was Pig. He was a big, fat, like if you think about Smokey, Pig was similar in size. He was black with some white down him. He also only had three paws because one of his paws got caught in a bear trap way back in the day before I was even born. Um, so, yeah, I've had some other pets over the years. Um, but anyways, that's it for this Q&A. Thanks again to everybody who submitted your questions. I'll be back with some other videos this week as we get ready for WrestleMania 34.